Hello, and welcome to our next lesson on Carnot maps. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about maps for functions that consist of three variables. Now, in the last video, we talked about um, functions that consist of two variables. We did a lot of the heavy lifting. We talked about the sort of basic overall mechanics and structure of Carnot maps and how they work and how we utilize them to optimize our Boolean expressions. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and look at that one. This one will be pretty quick. We're just going to take a look at the sort of structure of a three variable map and then do a couple of examples so we can see how optimization works on these three variable maps. So let's go ahead and build our K map here. Let's do this. Now the two variable was just a sort of square that was sort of like that. The three variable is like two, two variables stacked next to each other so we can extend out to be a rectangle kind of like that. Now, just like in the two variable map, we're going to cut it up to make a grid. We'll cut it in half vertically. We'll cut it in half vertically, leaving a little stem there on the left hand side. We'll cut it in half, or I meant to say horizontally. Now we'll cut it in half vertically, leaving a stem there on the top. Then we'll cut each of these two sections in half vertically, leaving a sort of stem there on the bottom. And we'll do it again here on the right hand side. So there we go, that leaves us our sort of basic shell of a three variable K-map. We'll add a little label stem out there. And now we'll go ahead and drop in some stuff. So if we have you know, this is going to be for our function f. Now our function f is a function of three variables. So it's a, b, and c, sort of, and we read them from left to right. Remember, we put our binary values inside each of these cells, being sure to sort of maintain adjacency all the way around. Um, so let's do that, right? So if we have 0, 0, 0 in the first cell, and I can always start 0 in the uh, up left or top left cell. Um, then we have 0, 0, 1. Now, remember, we have to keep the adjacency rules. So this next one has to be 0, 1, 1. And now we can have 0, 1, 0. And then we go to the next one. There are a couple things we could do to maintain adjacency here. But as it turns out, the right answer is to do 1, 0, 0. Right? That maintains adjacency between these guys. Now we need something that's adjacent between 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. And that's just going to be... 1, 0, 1. And now we need adjacency between 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1. So that's going to be 1, 1, 1. And then finally here we'll have 1, 1, 0, right? Which maintains adjacency between these cells and these cells. So now we've laid out all of our numbers, right? If we're going to do the base 10 representation, that's going to be 0, 1, 3, 2, four, five, seven, six, just like that. Now, let's go ahead and add our labels. Now, again, remember we're reading everything from left to right, A, then B, then C. So we notice here on this top row that that leftmost bit is always zero, right? That means that's going to be our A not row. And then down here on this bottom row, we notice that the leftmost bit is always one. Makes it our A row. Now, looking up top, again, we kind of notice that it's split in half by this stem. And on this left-hand segment, the middle bit, the B bit, is always 0. So that makes it B naught. And in this right-hand segment, we notice that the middle bit is always 1. So that makes it B. Now, looking here at the bottom, the leftmost bit in this center section, the rightmost bit, excuse me, is always 1. So that means we're going to have C in the middle. And on these outer sections, we have zeros in the rightmost bit. So that's C naught and C naught on the outside. So there's our basic structure there. Uh, let's go ahead and make a copy of this so we can sort of reuse it a little bit. We'll also do some tweaking. So I'm going to make a copy. But actually, before I move on, let's notice one interesting thing, right? So we've already talked about adjacency between these cells, but what about these outside cells? If we look at 0 and 2, right, bring over here, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, right, 
they are adjacent by those great code rules, right? Only the middle bit is different. Everything else is the same. So that means that zero and two are adjacent and can be connected um, when we group our terms. Same thing for six and four, one, one, zero, and one, zero, zero, right? Only the left, oh, excuse me, not the leftmost bit. Again, the center bit is the different one, right? So six and four can be grouped by those adjacency rules. So that means that the three variable map forms a sort of a cylinder, right? You can kind of wrap it around and two can connect to zero and six can come around and connect to four. So that's the sort of basic setup of a three variable map. Now let's go ahead and just work a couple of simple examples so we can kind of see how this all works together. So let's do this. Let's look at a function of three variables. A, B, C, and let's say that it's equal to the sum of midterms, let's do this, 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there we go. Let's go ahead and drop in our map that we already made. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up just a little bit more. I'm going to remove all that binary stuff that we put in the middle there. And just write the base 10 so it's a little bit easier to read. So we clear all that out. And we number it with our base 10 values, 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 6. All right, now, here we go. Just like in the two variable map, we drop ones in, the cells that are given in the sum of midterms expression. So we'll drop a one in zero, one, and then four, five, four, five, six, and seven. And now, sort of set up our solution here. F is equal to, let's go ahead and group some terms. So just like in the two variable map, um, the goal is to create the sort of smallest number of the largest possible groups, or the largest possible groups of cells, yeah. So we wanna, now we have the opportunity to create some bigger cells. So what we can do is, first down here on this bottom row, we can create a cell or a group of four, right? And, but the same rules after that apply, right? So we notice that this whole group fits neatly inside the A row, so this term simplifies to just A. And now we can go find our next term. Now, just like before, we can group a big box like this of so 0, 1, 4, and 5 can be grouped together. Remember, we can create groups that are rectangular and have sizes that are powers of 2, right? A group of 1, group of 2, or in this case, groups of 4. We could also have had a group of 8, right? But that would just be 1. So if we look at this guy, we'll have so we'll see that it sort of fits neatly inside the B naught column, but splits the A naught and A, and also splits the C and C naught. So that means that this term simplifies to just B naught. And frankly, that's all there is to that one. So let's do one more example. Let's do this. Let's say that F. It's a function of three variables, a, b, and c, and is equal to the sum of midterms 0, 1, 2, 4, and 6. 0, 1, 2, 4, and 6. Now let's go ahead and drop our map in. And yep, I totally forgot to copy the cleaned up version, so let me clear these out. There we go, nice and clean. So now we go ahead and add our ones and the cells are labeled in the general midterm expression. So zero, one, two, four, and six. So now set up our solution, f is equal to something, and we go hunting for our answers. Now, like we talked about before, two and zero are adjacent as are six or four and six. So what we can do is we can actually create term that sort of combines 
all four of these, just like that. And so we'll see that it splits the A naught and A, splits the B and B naught, but fits in the little C naught edges here. So this term is equal to C naught or something. Now we have looked at this one term. Now we know that we can sort of cross zero to two by adjacency, but we cannot create a group of one, zero, and two, because remember the groups have to be uh, size that's a power of two, so group of one, two, four, eight, and so on, but we cannot have a group of three. So the best we can do for this term um, is to just group it like that. And so here we see that it fits inside A naught. It also fits inside B naught, but splits the difference between C naught and C. So this one is just equal to A naught and B naught. And there we go. So this function simplifies to just A naught, B naught, or C naught. And there we go. That's a three variable k-map. We've done a couple of examples. We took a look at the structure. You know, like I said, it's exactly the same um, sort of mechanics as the two variable map. If you're a little bit confused and you didn't see the two variable map uh, video, go back and watch that. Like I said, um, that one we talk about the mechanics of how it works in a little bit more detail. Here we just wanted to work a few examples so we can see how this expands to uh, three variables. So that's all we have. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.